Hello YouTube. Today we're going to look at the Walther P1. Uh, this was originally um, the P38 uh, during World War II um, after Walther was kind of bombed out of existence eventually came back uh, in the late 50s and started making guns again after they rebuilt the factory and the West German uh, military wanted some more of these. The P38 was originally introduced to replace the quite expensive to manufacture Luger itself and uh, <clears throat> this is a much cheaper to make gun it's also a lot more reliable it still has some fairly complicated mechanisms um, but it does have some interesting features so this is a post-war P1 variant um, essentially the biggest difference between a real p38 of wartime and the p38s and p1s produced after the war is that the uh, frame is aluminum on the post-war models so uh, that's about all the history lesson for today and we're just gonna jump right in and uh, take a look at it so it's not loaded Magazine release on the bottom. Single stack magazine. Put that aside for now. And um, to field strip this, uh, because it has a very unusual locking mechanism, um, uh, this is technically a, uh, a fixed not not a f not a fixed barrel gun it's not a, it's not a blowback but the locking mechanism is uh is not permanently affixed to the barrel so the barrel does not tip so when this gun fires uh the barrel and slide will move back together and then the locking system takes over and unlocks allowing the slide to continue further back so when you just pull the slide back at first the slide and barrel are locked together but then it reaches the unlock point and the barrel is intercepted by the frame and the slide continues back. So it isn't a blowback gun, it is still a locking mechanism, but the barrel is not tilt tipping. And this is an important um, feature for early guns that were going to use suppressors. Um, until they invented the, uh, the I don't remember if it's Nelson or Nielsen, uh, the, the, the knuckle on a suppressor that allows the suppressor to stay state straight while your barrel tips uh, that that invention hadn't come around yet and so if you had a tipping barrel and a suppressor hanging off the end of it when the barrel went to tip it would have to lift up the whole suppressor and it would put a huge amount of strain at the connection point between the barrel and the, the suppressor itself and so uh, eventually they came up with that device to, to actually allow a a brief decoupling during recoil so that the barrel could tip and the suppressor would essentially stay straight. But um, other guns like uh, the Beretta, the M9, or the uh, 92 models, they have a similar type of mechanism in that their barrel, again, stays uh, vertically you know, aligned and, and perfectly horizontal there, rather, uh, and, and does not actually tip when it unlocks from the slide. So anyway, to field strip this, uh, you lock it back. It's got a huge thumb catch for locking it back. And then this lever here will rotate. So this is the locked position. You rotate it all the way around. It won't go all the way up. It'll stop there, but it does rotate more than 90 degrees, so 115 or whatever. And at that point, it's uh, going to be detached so that you will be able to ride it you know, past that point. And um, I think you have to discharge the hammer as well how do we what am i doing wrong let me think that through yes you got to, have to discharge the hammer at the same time so that it doesn't get hung up on uh the safeties um we could probably power through that actually let me try that real quick just as a, as a check because now i can't remember so we'll put that back on tuck our extractor under Oh. So many things to hold in place at once. Uh, let me try that again. If I was in that position and I just brought it forward, it sticks. I think. Yeah. It's a little hard to get past that. So, anyway, the point is when it's 
coming forward at the position at the rear, you will be able to pull the trigger at which point then you can strip it off. So I think what we're running into there is that um, the, let's see, this side over here is the firing pin safety uh, lever and this side over here is the decocker if I'm not mistaken and I think that the decocker is just rubbing up against the safety a little too hard uh, to be able to actually easily get that off without actually pulling the trigger. We're going to come back to the fancy frame later. We're going to take a look at our slide first. So um, now we can get a good view of the locking mechanism. So uh, when it's in this position, the barrel is, is, is locked uh, tight with the slide. This locking lug is, is pushed up into the frame so that if you move the barrel around, they, they can't separate. However, once this gets pushed, it, it wedges this piece into that uh, unlocked position. And now it's at a point where it can slide completely off the gun. So what's happening from the side is if you can see down in here where this, this space is, that's where this wing of the locking lug sits. So when this is down, that this piece here is intercepting the slide right in there. And then when it gets pushed up by the button, now it's free to ride in this channel. It's no longer sitting down in here, it's up here so it can slide and it locks in on, on both sides, uh, left and right. So that's a good positive lock mechanism. If you actually look, that's not a 90 degree angle. It's actually coming in some. So the harder something pushes on this, uh, if it were angled either you know perfectly neutral, it would still be safe. If it were angled a little bit positive, then that pressure would allow a force in, uh, in this direction to actually lift that up. Um, but it actually comes down and, and is actually cammed in just a little bit. So the harder you push, well, this is a round tipped punch, so that's not a good example, but the harder you push straight back on this, the more it's going to essentially keep itself in that down locked position. So something has to intercept it back there to actually kick it off. So what's holding this in place is uh, this spring clip. So if you actually activate it, you can pop it out from under that little clip. There's not a whole lot of pressure. It just sits in there and hangs onto it. And if we really wanted to, we could remove this clip, but as they're kind of hard to, to replace sometimes, they've been out of them on occasion on most of the parts stores. I don't really want to do that right now, but if you had to, you would uh, slide a punch in there, um, a small enough punch, and uh, just... Um, Pull it forward and that spring would would go down enough and putting it in is just the opposite you have to squeeze that gently just enough to get it under there and it'd pop right in and so the locking block is, sits under there and the shape of that just puts some gentle downward pressure on it and then this piece is held in by um oh, is it a, a roll pin that's in there if I recall, it's a blind pin, so I don't want to actually try and take that out. Um, is it a pin even? No, wait a minute. Now, now, I, now I can't remember it. So hang on a minute and let me look. I think my hole's got some funk in it. Let's shine a little light on there and see what's actually going on. <laughs> Well, if I had to be 100% honest, I would have to say that it's not a roll, it's not a pin that goes all the way through it because I can rotate this. It is centered, and uh, since I've never taken it out, my guess is that there's a groove in the middle of this piece, and that that is, uh, that, that's just a blind pin that's pushed in there to just in, intrude into that groove a little bit. Um, at least it doesn't look like it's threaded, so I don't think there was ever a screw there. I'm guessing if you wanted that out, you would have to drill that pin part out, and then this would come free, and then you would replace it and, and again push in the blind pin. A blind pin just means that it doesn't go all the way through, you know, and show up in the chamber or something. 
Um, so you can only push it in one way. After that, you've got to essentially drill it out. So we're not going to take that out right now. Um, sometimes it's under a spring or something, and you can actually pop the piece past it. But I'm pretty sure that that's pinned in there. And I don't want to go digging at it. So we will leave that for a more advanced uh, day. I'll just try and see if the schmutz can come out and maybe get a better view. But I'm pretty sure that that's what's going on, that we just can't see it because it's just a big end of a blind pin. At least that's what it looks like. So that's what I'm going with for now. Um, yeah, maybe if you're lucky, you've got a threaded one in a screw. But as far as I can tell, this looks like just a, a blind one. So we'll leave that in there. And uh, that's that's our barrel, our locking mechanism. Go ahead and pop that back in just so it doesn't drift around the bench. And, and now uh, <clears throat> we've got some pretty interesting things going on up here. So our, our safety um, is also a decocker. So uh, there's a couple different things. We've got the firing pin safety going on. So the firing pin is uh, not moving forward unless we push in the firing pin safety and then it moves in. So firing pin safety was something we'll have to lift this up in order for the gun to fire. Now, if you notice this groove cut into the body of the safety as it goes through, um, on this side, that groove doesn't, doesn't really change. It's, it's not really doing anything there but on this side it it's pushed a big piece of metal up on us and that means that this this would activate something in the frame uh, which in this case is going to be the the uh, hammer drop mechanism so when you put the safety on it will also drop the hammer um, but in a safe way so uh, It also has a, a loaded chamber indicator. So when there's a round in there, um, this piece uh, will come back. Whoops. Hard to do this with too many fingers. This piece will come back and be sticking out. So you can tell if it's loaded or not. And uh, let's see what else. <laughs> and then our extractor over here, uh, which is held in by mechanisms that we can't quite see yet. So, disassembly. It's been a while since I've done this, so we might have to guess a little bit here. Um, I think that you have to start with removing this whole mechanism and basically this top plate uh, can come off but uh, it's a little tricky to get off you have to actually uh, apply pressure back here and push it forward but then they also have to have something lifting it up on the underside so we're going to get in here to lift this up just a bit like that so yeah it springs up and then while we're holding that up just a bit, then we're going to try and bring it forward. <clears throat> oh, and there it goes. So once that pops off, um, that's also what's holding the uh, the sight in, and the sight is holding in the spring for the firing pin safety and the firing pin safety itself, and it's also a retaining uh, mechanism for uh, the other parts of the gut. So we'll get to those in just a second. We're going to look first of all at this crazy ass spring and system here so what you're gonna see is that you've got one spring here on the loaded chamber indicator but there's also 
uh, this mousetrap style spring coming across the top of it and that is actually attached to the firing pin spring that is one big complicated spring and you don't want to mess it up because if you mess it up uh, they're hard to replace um, they, they, I mean, yeah, you can find them sometimes. So to get this off, we would just want to lift it up, but we don't want to lift it way up because we don't want to stress this spring. And we're just going to slide it far enough forward um, that we can get it to basically here. And um, then we're going to take this spring off. Now this spring has a wide end and a narrow end and uh, you can basically thread it past that uh, retaining point. A little sticky at the end. Uh, so try not to deform it too much. And uh, then again, not over stressing that spring, try and keep it safely and you'll be able to guide the whole thing out. Oops. Just threw the spring right into my lap. Nuts. Where did that go? Seriously, Walter. Don't do this to me. Oh, there you are. Ah, can't hide forever. Sorry about that. So, uh, I'm just going to put these back. So they stay together and so we should be able to uh, take that firing pin safety and its spring and push them out through the other side and we'll look at exactly how that engages in a second and I am having some memory issues on exactly how the retaining pin works here so I'm going to put a little pressure on the firing pin so I don't launch it across the whole universe here just find something to tuck in there and I'm going to push out that other retaining pin and that's what's holding the, the firing pin in still at that point so uh, now that that's out our firing pin is going to be able to, to back out and we obviously can't pull this crazy spring mechanism out the back, so grab onto the spring and lift that spring out. Now here's that crazy spring, and slide the firing pin out so you can see how it sits on here. So it just sits on the front part of the the, the pin, and uh, this one's you know been mangled a little bit. In a perfect world, these coils would still line up pretty well. But basically, uh, when, it, when it fires, it will go in between all of them. And at the same time, this is operating the, uh, the other lever. So the retention pin is sitting in this side of it. Actually, the small end is up. So the retention pin was just sitting over here uh, on that side, the little dot that I, I filled in green is um, to let you know which way is up and then the other side is the firing pin safety so I'm going to in, invert both of these so we can uh, think about how it is in the gun I'm also going to take the spring out so I don't lose it let's find a good way to, uh, to show this guy side by side so essentially, when the firing pin safety is down, um, so this is actually looking at it from the top. So when there's no, nothing is pushing the firing pin safety into the up position. Its neutral position is here, and this square part is essentially right in there. Now when something pushes it up, it's going to push it up to where the curved part is. And so when it's in the up position, it can move further in. So when it's here, it can't move at all. But if something lifts it up, it can now come halfway past the safety, which is far enough to strike the primer. Um, I don't remember without looking if this is an inertial pin or not. So No, this is not an inertia firing pin, which means if something is 
if something can actually push the firing pin flush with the back, then the firing pin will be protruding out enough to hit a primer. So it's not an inertial firing. An inertial firing pin is one where when the hammer hits it, the hammer is stopped by the back of the slide. And if the pin is just pushed flush with the back of the slide, it won't protrude. But if the hammer hits it, it imparts enough inertia and momentum, uh, it parts enough momentum that the inertia will carry it into and the firing uh, into the primer hard enough to set it off. So once again, that goes like that with the funky part facing forward. And what have we got left? We have, we can see the back of the spring, which is holding our um, extractor in place. And I don't, I'm having a hard time remembering what else holds the uh, safety in. And I believe the answer is nothing. There is a big detent here, and I don't remember exactly how that works. So we're going to try and be careful as we pull the safety out, not to lose whatever that is. But I believe that we should be able to uh, walk the safety out. Yeah, you can see the safety comes, begins walking out. Now I can see a hole there, and I know that the detent of whatever mechanism is on the bottom. So something is going to come shooting out the bottom of this as I guide it off. So I'm going to get my hand under there right now to catch catch it as it comes out. Peek in there, but not too often. Okay, and it didn't fire out with giant force. It just popped out a little bit. And I think it might actually be peened. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, in this case, they were thinking of us, and they were nice. If we look, this uh, this big, big detent pin here, the reason it didn't come launching across the room is because they peened it in ever so slightly on one side. So after they press that in at the factory for us, they actually peen it over. So if you don't have to replace this, if you have you know, no absolute need to get in there and replace that spring, unless it is damaged, don't take this out because it's difficult to, to re-peen it. You have to have something that can press that in out of your way while you strike it to peen the metal over. So. Uh, I'm sure they make a tool for just that, but I would say it's fairly robust. So unless that spring is rusted out in some fashion that forces you to have to replace it, don't go in there. Um, from the rest of the mechanism, let's get ourselves oriented. Uh, so it's up. This is the fire position. And in the uh, fire position, it can actually come inside the the body of the safety just that much but in the safe position which is uh, rotating here it actually locks that firing pin up good and that firing pin can't go anywhere so when it rotates over here now it can come so the firing pin has to come you know past the uh, you know it basically comes into the body of the safety um, just a little bit and uh, can't do that when it's on safe. Okay. So um, this is just drilled in at an angle. Uh, so while you can see the back of that spring, you really don't want to try and take it out from there. At least I don't think you could do that without really making a mess of it. I'm um, not a hundred percent sure on that. I mean. They, they did give you a view of it for some reason, maybe to, to oil it or something, but it just looks like if you tried to get the spring out from that side that you'd bend the living crap out of it. So I'm thinking that basically this is the back, this, you know, this, the front of the extractor, this pin here is the back of the extractor. Now it's blocked by the plunger, so we need to get something in there to push the plunger out of our way. And then something, well, I guess that worked too. I was just able to wrap it out with my thumb. I was thinking I was going to have to poke at it, but it came right out for us. And now at that point, I guess maybe that's one of the reasons they left that visible is to help you tap it out. And in this case, the plunger is, uh, it doesn't have a flat side or anything. It's, it's uniform, which is kind of nice because that means you don't have to futz with it so much getting it in there. And that's where it sits in the gun to uh, push that extractor claw down into place. 
claw is nothing fancy. It does have a, a slight curve in it to match the curve of the round. If you notice, it does catch the round pretty close to the midpoint, maybe just a slight, you know, few, few degrees off the of center. Um, so, but you don't see it have a, the curve is pretty symmetrical here. Sometimes it would have a slightly less of a curve at the bottom, but well, actually, I, you know what? It also sits in there at an angle, so that actually is what compensates for that. So because it's sitting in there at an angle, while the piece itself has got a symmetrical circle, it's actually sitting like this, which means that uh, this, this, this bottom end is actually going to be a little further to the outside of the round than the top which makes sense it's going to be really well aligned with it which means a, a round can slide up under this fairly easily without having to push it way out of the way so um since this has got a lot of pieces let's go ahead and and reassemble this while we're here i'm just going to do it in the reverse order from how we took it apart and we'll see if we have to go out of our way to get this back together on this Extractors are sometimes the bane of my existence. If we're lucky, we can use the extractor itself to push the detent in, and this time I was lucky. So, yay for that. And the next thing we took out was the safety itself. And uh, again, uh, the detent has to be worked in. So we could probably just push it really hard and get it to go in, but I don't really like the idea because it could put a dent in the side of it that we don't really need there. So I'm going to guide that in a little bit. Whoops. Just by pushing down. Uh, I guess none of that was visible. Sorry. My point was as we come in here. Um, change my light angle. Sorry about that. I need to set my light, lights up quite right. Hopefully that sheds a little bit better light on this. Um, as we come in, if we just push that through, that would be kind of asking a lot. Of, uh, of our little detent here um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start it in with the screwdriver and then pop it in and you know the two holes in the frame where it snaps in leave it in the fire position to get everybody else in so um, the firing pin again in my case has the dent that shows you which side is up if you don't if yours doesn't have a mark then just remember the square side is the firing pin safety and the curved side is the retaining pin. As the pin goes in, of course, it has to go through our spring. So don't forget to put the spring back on and uh, you know guide it into position. And uh, as we push it in, we'll go ahead and drop the retaining pin in there. And of course, I missed. Try that again, and what I'm going to do is make sure my little dot is facing more or less up. <laughs> and I'm going to use the back of my punch to push it in a little further. Uh, again, while you're doing this, keep an eye on that spring to make sure your coils are lined up. Um, that spring, if it misses one of those coils and gets on the outside of it, you can make a mess of it. And that's, like I said, it's a kind of hard to replace spring. And then our pin goes in there. And basically, I'm not quite straight up and down, which is why it's giving me some heart heartburn here. And I failed. All right. When all else fails, try it from the other direction. So, once again, get this in there. I'm going to try and use the screwdriver to hold this back of it straight up and down this time. Let's see if that doesn't get me a better shot. There it goes. That worked a little bit better. So, yeah, using the screwdriver gave me the ability to kind of wiggle it in a little bit better. Again, I want to come up here and double check that, uh, that that mechanism is in there solid so that when I push the firing pin up, it's not bound on those coils. It's actually in the inside of them. It's not to the left or right of those end coils and that I do get firing pin protrusion. So 
Firing pin looks like it's in there good. And so now we need to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the firing pin safety back in, put its spring on it later. And we're gonna back this guy in. Uh, most of these don't have a particular top or bottom. If you remember which was the top or bottom, great, but it's essentially a flat piece of metal. I think mine has developed a curve over the years, but uh, it really isn't supposed to have one. So we're gonna guide it in, and then we're just gonna lift it up just a little bit while we get this piece through. And um, then, uh, whoops, while we're here, we wanna get the spring on. So again, I'm not putting any more pressure on that than I, than I have to. And uh, get that spring on the large end towards the back. And now <clears throat> the, the whole thing is going to lift up just a little bit to get us this last step. Now we're just going to slide it back until it comes down. And we're going to make sure the spring is under there and that the back of it uh, is, is coming through there. <clears throat> and we put our firing pin safety spring back in and our sight is going to sit right on top of these and hold them down and now that we can see how this is shaped on the sides um, the reason you have to lift it up is to get this this ledge past here where it sits so when it snaps into place these little legs are right behind this piece of metal and so that's why we had to lift up and then the uh, big wings back here go into a, a significant cut in the in the frame under here so when we're putting it back together those guys have to be kind of pushed down um, while you're doing this to get to get them to seat under that piece and you just push it down and back like that and it'll snap into place just like that. And again, it can't come forward unless we lift that up to get over the ledge. So that's our slide fully reassembled. I can tuck the uh, barrel back in again, put it in the unlocked position and the barrel, uh, the barrel aligns with both the uh, little spaceship shape at the top and the big lug side at the bottom. And once it's all the way in there, once that's up, they're locked together again. So, I'm going to set him aside. Pause for a tasty beverage. <clears throat> and now we're going to take a peek at this guy. So, um, as I mentioned before, uh, there's a couple things going on uh, here. The let's go ahead and put it in the down position. All right, I'm back here. As we pull the trigger, um, we're going to see a couple things happen. One is this has got to lift up further to push in on the firing pin safety. So uh, it was sitting here. As I pull the trigger, you see it lift up just that little last bit. As uh, just before the the hammer drops, that's enough to lift the firing pin safety. So um, it, it does have it partially unlocked, which is kind of a design flaw, I think. Um, but it seems to be how it's working. Um, like I, I actually wonder if that's up far enough to actually activate the safety, even though. It really shouldn't until you pull the trigger a little bit more. So it definitely does come up before the release, just not a lot. So as I pull that trigger, it does cam up a little bit more, but I suspect that's already in a release position. Uh, the other thing that's going on here is this piece. If this gets pushed down, that's the hammer drop. Um, so that's when you are when you put the safety on, that piece gets pushed down. and and drops your hammer back down uh, recoil rods and springs this is a dual recoil rod spring system 
So these guys back here are that system. And I think this is easiest demonstrated with this off. These two big uh, lugs here actually are, are what runs into those. And the rod is only this inch and a half long and is encased in the aluminum of the frame. And so when those, those lugs are you know, in the slide here, when the slide goes back, it's going to have to push these guys back. And they will run. This is a, a runner that they can run in. And so as this is, I don't think we're going to be able to actually see this happening. Uh, well, sort of. So I'll add a little extra light and hope that we can see this. Maybe we can see that. So you can see the spring and the piece of the slide that's going to run into it. And then as it goes back, it's pushing those rods along the runners. <clears throat> and uh, that's how that works. So, um, getting those out um, there's two different ways to do it and I'm I will be honest I'm not a hundred percent sure which is the smarter way so the one way is that you can take a screwdriver or something small and flat and stick it back in here and you can compress the spring uh, to the point where you can pick up you know most of these coils and essentially hang on to the rod itself but bring the spring back, whoops, ow, bring the spring back off of it. So if we bring the spring far enough back, now the rod's out of the way and the spring can come out the front. So that's one way. Now you can't really put it in that way because um, the way this is designed, the, the rod also um, bottoms out in the the slide it, excuse me, in the frame itself to keep it from launching so you can't actually tilt this enough while the springs on it to get it past that point at least not that I'm aware of without mangling it so I don't think you can really just force it in or it just the spring makes it just a little bit too wide too big and it, and it binds up there so you have to come in essentially from the back and uh, and do it that way so um, when the springs in there uh, the there is an opening at the back where it's just a little wider and so you can have the spring feeding in from the back uh, if you're careful. Now, again, though, you know, I'm still not convinced that that's really a better way to do it because it really isn't got a lot of room there. So you can get the spring in that way, but I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure what they wanted us to do design wise. I've never actually seen a original armorer's manual for it. So I think that the safest way to do it is essentially to do it kind of like the opposite of what I did taking it apart. Use that to start it and get as many coils as you can back here, but then uh, bring the spring in first and then the rod in. And you'll be able to set it just down in there like that. So the rod itself can go in as long as the coils aren't in the way, but if you can't get the coils and the rod in at the same time there. So I'll demonstrate the same thing on the other side. Grab as many coils as we can, hang on to the rod, pull it back, and see the rod can be lifted out at that point. So we can tuck it back in and we can lift it back out. But if the spring is here and we tried that, um, you know, the width of the spring is such that it's going to get in the way. So anyway, we don't have to take those out if we don't need to, but I, you know, take them out to clean them, whatever. Just be careful not to mangle the spring. Uh, you'll be happier in the long run. 
Now, um, there is a detent mechanism under this uh, that you can take this out if you want to, but it's kind of a pretty big pain in the butt to get it back in. Um, you, you do have a hole here that you can kind of reach in to hold it down if you can get it pressed down. So basically, once once that's out, you've got to push a detent and spring down, tuck something else in here to hold it, and then get it back in. And then there's there's a groove um, as well as the indentation where it, where it snaps into place. But uh, honestly, if you don't have to, don't, don't bother with it. Um, there's just no particular benefit to it unless you actually have to replace it but if you do uh, to get it moving you don't want it in one of the snapped positions you want it halfway between and just push gently from the one side and get it started and then make sure you hang on to it because as it comes past that the spring and detent are going to launch um i don't know do you want to see that everyone loves to see me struggle so i'll go ahead and do it uh, so this is that that locking piece and uh, There's really not that much interesting to it. There's just the two positions where it snaps into and Then there's the big hairy detent I was talking about so let me see if I've got Any of my punches that are gonna be willing to hold this guy flat long enough to do this I might be lucky enough to push this down from this side. Ugh. All right, all right, well, maybe. Got it started. Actually, maybe that's part of the trick to it. If we get it partially in, we don't actually have to fight that, so I mean, maybe maybe there's a smart way if we get that partially in can we use the piece itself to push it the rest oh you can look at that all right so there is a smart way to do it without losing the whole thing uh so again in that halfway in and out position um, once it clears this side of the of the of the frame uh the detent's going to want to push it so it's you know caddy corner however um, paying attention to the angle that the detent has to be pushed back down, we can see that we should be able to come in here and just use the piece itself to push the detent back in. And then that works. All right, so not as heinous as I had feared. I'm going to leave it like that for now. Um, this, this bolt that goes across is a, a support. Um, it doesn't uh, come out. There's no reason to take it out uh, if you were crazy and had some burning desire to you can knock that roll pin out and and then push it out but it's a it's a support member so it's basically just a big steel bar going through the aluminum because this proved to be a weak point in the aluminum um, if I can separate out the barrel for just a second we can see how uh, how these bits play together all the way in from the front. Obviously put that in the takedown position. Okay, so um, as the uh, the barrel comes forward, it's this, that block, that, that steel lug that is actually um, going to going to lift this forward so it's at an angle and it's going to ride that part uh, forward um, and that was that you know that was the bit that was running out when this comes back uh, it's the but the button is getting pushed down by just its contact with the frame here so the lug is going to be in this up position until it meets there and then as the button is pushed in that pushes it out now of course I have to push because we're going against recoil spring pressure here but as you can see 
that's the unlock and now the, the once it's unlocked the the rest of the slide is free to move along uh, when it's here the slide is caught on the lug or more specifically when it's here that's that blocking the slide because the slide has got metal in here that wants to come back so once it's free then the slide can come on so that's that thing working um, and like I said you don't, you don't have any reason to ever take that apart I don't, it doesn't break or wear out but it's a big steel support piece so uh, let's take off our grips and get a little bit into the mechanism and see about finding all the parts that we know are there. What do we know is there? A hammer, a sear, a disconnector, and a trigger because that's what's in every semi-automatic firearm. So it's got one long screw that goes and, and goes through both halves of the, uh, of the grip. And what do we see here but some wackiness with our springs. This spring, coiled around that, that uh, peg in the frame, is both the, uh, the, bolt hold, the, the slide lock latch to take lever off so that the slide lock comes down, or is held down. So the magazine would push that up. Uh, it's got a little leg on the inside. And then this pushes it you know, back down when the magazine drops out. And it's also, dun da da dun our sear spring. So this is our sear mechanism. And um, this is going to be like the, uh, the same design sear-wise as we see in the PPK PP, uh, K series, um, PP and PPK. And it's essentially borrowed from a revolver. It's, it's the, you know, the PPK was the first double single um, semi-automatic, uh, but the mechanism is very similar to a revolver. So there's a leg, on, there's two legs on the hammer, one on the top that in double action mode, um, if we, if we look in here, this leg here is actually a spring-loaded leg that's, a, that's it's part of the hammer. So it can come back, but if it's here and you push on it, it's going to bring the hammer with it. So if something pushes on this little leg, that, that moves the hammer back. And so when we pull the trigger at this point, the trigger bar is engaging the sear here, and that is going to lift up on that little leg and bring the hammer back with it. Maybe a little extra light might help. So it's the top of the rounded part of the sear, bumps into that little leg, and brings the hammer back. Now, in single action, it's the other side of the sear that's doing the work. So when it's cocked all the way, the top little leg doesn't matter anymore. It's not even making contact with anything, even though we can't see it. But the big bottom leg of the, of the hammer is stuck in this shelf on the sear. And so, again, the trigger bar is going to grab the sear at the same point and move it forward. Um, and what's going to happen when it moves forward is now it's not going to be able to hold the, that, that lets the hammer out of that ledge so it can come forward. And so that the little, in double action, as we're pulling and pulling and pulling, the short leg is going to actually slide over the top of the sear. And that's going to be what falls and goes bang in double action. But in single action, it's been cocked and caught on the bottom of it. So as it's, the hammer is being cammed back, the, the, so when the, when the slide is pushing the hammer back, the little leg is never going to encounter the sear. It's the underside that's going to lift the sear up. And it's going to tuck itself all the way under it, at which point the sear spring over here, pushing the sear down, causes it to snap over and it holds it in that ledge until something comes along, da -da -da -da, trigger bar, and pulls it. Now, uh, somewhere in here, we're also going to find a disconnect uh, stroke, which is going to push our trigger bar down, which is important. So um, when we uh, pull the trigger, so this little spring is holding the trigger bar, or is pushing the trigger bar up. So if we push the trigger bar down, that spring pulls it back up and that's important because it puts it in that notch in the sear that lets it hang on to it. If the trigger bar is down, it misses that notch. 
So the spring holds it up so that it, it catches in the notch. We pull the trigger, the gun goes bang. Now, if something slide pushes the hammer back, nothing can catch it. So something is going to come along and bump into this disconnector, or sorry, bump into the top of the trigger bar somewhere along the way and drop it down, at which point the sear will be reset. So now when the hammer comes back, it's caught. So that's, that's the disconnect that keeps it from flopping around between shots. And if I'm not mistaken, it's usually just a chunk of the slide that, that does that work. So if we look... Doo -doo 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 -doo. If we look here, our slide is going to be coming back. And uh, sure enough, if you... <coughs> Notice, let's see. Oh. Tuck all the guts in while we do this. So, if we look at the underside of the slide, you'll note that there's only one place in the slide that's got this little cutout, and you can see a nice wear mark everywhere else in the slide. So, that means that it's only when the gun is perfectly in battery that the uh, trigger bar can actually lift into that upper position. When the gun is recoiling, the slide itself is going to bump into the trigger bar and push it down. So if we watch as this comes back, you see that? Right there, you're going to see this piece here get pushed down and here's the track where it, it's worn in the slide. And if you look as it comes back, I'm going to pull this back to make it even more obvious. So now it's tucked way up in there, but when the slide starts to cycle, it's going to push it down. And that's far enough that it will no longer be in position to, to hold the sear. So when something lets, uh, you know, when the hammer comes past the sear at this point, Um, the whoops I let it go too far forward uh, this is not going to be there to intercept it <clears throat> so uh, disconnection always good to find all these things because they have to be there in every semi-automatic firearm now this one actually has some uh, some odd things this is the uh, about to say this is the ejector but I feel like it's on the wrong side of the gun am I just losing my mind I don't think I am I never paid attention to that um, Pretend you didn't see that. Uh, da, 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 da. So as our slide is cycling back, lo and behold, sure enough, that's the first thing that's going to intrude past the breech face. So that means that even though I never even noticed it while shooting the damn thing, um, the other reason that this whole face is open is because there doesn't really have an ejection port. It's going to eject to the left. So the ejector being on the right side as the round is being pulled back. Um, yeah, I, I never even thought that through. The extractor is on the left, the ejector is on the right. So this is in many ways a uh, left-handed gun. Neat. Obviously, I don't get this guy to the range very much. Um, the ejector is also a strange, almost afterthought one. Uh, you, I've seen this in other things. The Colt Mustang and the SIG P238 and 938 models have this uh, concept. The ejector 
is uh, it doesn't actually move on its own as in conjunction with anything else, but it is spring-loaded um, simply so that you can uh, get the slide past it. The slide this needs to be out of the way for the slide to go on the gun, and uh, the only way to do that was to make it put it on a spring and and let it tip down long enough for you to get it past. Um, there's no other functionality associated with that tipping though, so it's just assembly. And so we'll see as we get in there that there's a little spring somewhere. I think it might actually be uh, pressed into the piece itself. It's been a long time. All right, so uh, taking it apart. The magazine release down here cams back and Again, double use of the spring. This is not only our, our hammer spring, it's our, it's our main hammer spring, but because of the way this is set into the frame, and this is given a little bit of, uh, you know, it come, the, the hammer strut comes through, but the spring is in a little groove on this piece, it essentially, uh, since this becomes the point of rotation and this becomes you know, where the force is, that's pushing this forward, but it also means that we can cam this backwards enough to get the magazine in and out. So this was before the days of side style magazine releases uh, in, in, in Walther Firearms. They had on the bot the mag releases on the bottom for a long time. It wasn't that the side release hadn't been invented. That's been there since 1911 and earlier. Um, it's just that this was at the time the the more common way. Uh, for magazines to be loaded. And it does not allow for particularly fast changing of magazines. Um, uh, you, you, you don't just drop a magazine and slam one in. You've got to be holding it firmly with one hand and, and do the release. So there's no one hand magazine release here no matter what you're doing. You're holding the gun like this. You, you just can't really operate this in one hand without spinning it around. So you've got to come up and with the grips on this is easier but you thumb it off and it pulls it out and when you go to push it in now they did they did build a little bit in here which is nice so s earlier guns didn't have uh, that that front cut out so you actually had to come in with the magazine and push that lever back before you could insert it at all this one's a little better as long once you get the magazine in there it will push that back on its own so this is an improvement in loading it's still not as easy as you know slamming one in there but it is much easier than than others where you literally have to force it back with the magazine but the one thing that this is a nice improvement on is for taking it apart all we have to do is lift this push straight up on this normally you're pushing backwards on it and it's rotating around that well if we come straight up from the bottom we're gonna be pushing that pin and we're gonna be able to pop that off the frame and it's gonna come right out like that and so um, as far as uh, you know takedowns for mainsprings that the if there's an easier one in the world, I don't know what it is. And apparently that's it for disassembly. No, <laughs> sorry about that. Let's try that uh, one or two steps here. And look at all these pieces at once. So what, what fell out was obviously our hammer, our hammer pin. And this was sitting in here like that. And the curved bit back there pushes up on this pin that's permanently fixed through the back of it so it's going to rotate around the big pin and it's going to but the point of force from this spring is moved over through this big old curve onto that pin so by this spring pushing straight up that's pushing straight up essentially here so that that makes the hammer rotate around and um, it does also bottom out uh, they, this is a mechanism they built. Um, I'm never a hundred percent sure on the logic here. Uh, basically, when this is bottomed out, I'll try and put it together to get an exact measurement. Uh, 
what I'm trying to get at is generally the hammer is not necessarily forced all the way forward. Um, oh, the other safety's in the way. Because the sears in there, this might be hard to, to illustrate. But yeah, when this bottoms out, so this is as far up as this can push the hammer. The hammer is not all the way forward. So this, the hammer strut will actually bottom out on the hammer itself before the hammer is all the way forward. So when it fires, all that force is transferred to the hammer to here but it's actually the inertia of the hammer that it's going to carry it the rest of the way forward. And uh, I think that essentially prevents the hammer from resting on the firing pin. So when we put this all the way together and the hammer is down, what we should find is it doesn't actually rest on the firing pin. It actually rests a little bit behind it. Um, that's the way it's slightly safer if you drop it on the hammer um, you won't actually be imparting force directly from hammer touching firing pin. Uh, it's not particularly safe though. And let's see what else fell out automatically was the, um, the hammer drop. And actually, you know what? We're going to put, I'm going to put those back in just to illustrate how some more of that works. We want to understand all of the mechanisms while we've got it apart. <laughs> Oops. And line you up. I push it too far through. Uh, I think I can slide this guy in after the fact. If I get hammer pin. Do, 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 do. Okay, so um, I wanted to look at how the hammer drop mechanism works. So what we're going to see over here is the hammer drop is just going to push. All right, if what we can see, hopefully you guys have got enough light to see this. So the piece I'm moving here is the hammer drop and it actually connects with the sear just a little bit on the underside of it. So it's not actually touching the top rounded part of the sear, it's coming in at the bottom. So when we push this down, we're actually pushing the sear up and forward. So it's coming in and pushing on the bottom side of the sear and that lifts it out so the hammer is not going to be stuck in its notch anymore. And that's what lets the hammer drop. So what raises that up as we're going is actually the top of the sear. So as the hammer is coming up, the top of the sear grabs that and lifts it into position till it's now on the back side of the sear. So that's our hammer drop mechanism. Now on the flip side is the firing pin safety. So we'll go ahead and put it in the fired position. And again, the sear is what's going to be doing all the operating. So as the trigger bar pulls the sear, uh, it's going to rotate the sear up. The rounded side of the top of the sear is going to encounter the underside of the firing pin safety and lift it up. And as I said before, I think this is actually a little bit unsafe. It's perfectly great for double action, but in single action, it really looks like it, it's pushing the firing pin safety up. So I, I question exactly how safe this is. Now it could be that mine is just old enough that, and I don't know what kind of monkey boy had it before me. That's awfully shiny. And I doubt that the factory polished it. I'm wondering if somebody really didn't know how this piece worked and took it upon themselves to 
smooth the action of their pistol and may have actually ended up making it uh, a tad on the unsafe side. Because it honestly doesn't quite look right. That just feels like it shouldn't have a double curve in it. So it's got one angle here and another one here, but nothing actually inter interacts with it there. So you know, when this is in the gun, there's no justification for this side of it to have ever gotten polished. This is where it actually interacts with the safety or the sear. So the sear, you know, is lifting up on it here, but I think somebody came in and, and, and changed these angles. I should probably buy a new one of those um, since I don't think it's actually particularly safe. Uh, this hammer mechanism, um, this piece here is just to cover it to keep dirt from getting in there. So this, this basically means that when it's cocked, you don't actually get a view down into the mechanism. But this little leg, it's on a regular coil spring held in by a, a, just a pin straight through there. And um, I'm a little curious, there's another pin behind it that looks like it must be the, the backstop. I'm not sure why it needed that. I'm not sure why they couldn't just mill that out to the correct size. But for whatever reason, they've got a pin in there. Um, and again, this is a mechanism borrowed from revolvers. So this leg comes down. It's very smooth and curved on the back because the rounded part of the sear is what interacts with it. And when that rounded part of the sear, I'm going to use this as a substitute for the sear, it's not. But once that rounded part of the sear cams up far enough, it just falls off and the hammer comes down, bang. And then the flip side is when you're, uh, when the hammer, when it's cocking itself for double action, it's the underside of the sear that that's going to get caught up under it. So uh, revolvers look a lot like this. Uh, so... Uh, I think if we just pop this spring out, I don't... Yeah, this the way this spring is built, you don't want to take it off the peg. Um, you, you'll, you'll end up bending it so when it when it's not under tension it's not really in the way of anything but it's really really close to the actual outer the inner diameter of the spring is almost identical to the outer diameter of that peg and uh so you could get it off you know one coil at a time but but if you're not replacing the spring don't mess with it somebody looks like they tried to this looks a little bent up already i'm not going to make it worse um but what you can see on the trigger mechanism is that the trigger bar is actually connected here. And this very funky spring, yet again, a crazy over-engineered spring, has another little mousetrap style side, which is actually engaging and holding in the trigger bar by virtue of just having a little notch in the back of that uh, pin on the trigger bar. So if we something flat if we hold this piece out just a little bit that's gonna make it so we can pull the trigger bar out so right, when it's like this we can't really pull it out because it engages in the notch if we pull this back now we can pull the trigger bar now that's gonna slip back down on us and we'll tug that out later so now the trigger bar is free from the trigger and we just have to carefully maneuver it out from under the, uh, the sear itself. So there's room carved into the frame for us to do that. So that's the way you do it. So once you get it set back in there, then you would again come in, line it up with the trigger. We'll get there and reassembly. And on this side, uh, similarly, um, it looks like this take the the slide stop lever is also our trigger pin I don't think that they're separate if I push the trigger pin yeah that's actually pinned in there so uh, again I'm gonna come in here and pop the spring out and relieve that tension 
so there's nothing on the sear side and that's actually going to give us the ability to knock the sear pin out whoops sear pin is also holding in the ejector there you go uh, now that that pin is out however we can rotate the sear and it will come out from the right side of the gun you can't push it out the other side it's too wide but it will come out the right side of the gun and you can study all the rest of how that works and now that this we've got some some wiggle room in here uh, we should be able to get the trigger off um, I don't think there's a lot of tension left in this spring there's a little bit hopefully not too much so What I'm trying to see is exactly how far in to the body of the takedown lever does this spring go? Because again, I don't want to have to take this spring all the way off if I don't have to. This one doesn't look like it's quite as hard as the other side. Let's see if I can do this without too much pressure. So I went ahead and popped it off just because. And oh, actually, there's a. Well, that's nice. The trigger has actually got its own little spring retention mechanism. What I couldn't tell just by eyeballing it was how far into this, uh, into the slide stop that the that the this pin was actually going. So I didn't want to try and stretch it way out to the side. And it does look like, let's see, it sits in there at, you know, at most that much. But that's still pretty significant engagement. Again, though, as it is, these are aluminum pieces. You can see where, you know, that spring when it's under tight has, you know, worn in on this peg. So uh, it's up to you whether you want to remove this one. It's beefier than this one, so the spring will survive better, but the frame will survive less well. And uh, now that that's out, the trigger and its little spring can all come out through the top. And what I was commenting on was that they were really nice when they did this. And there's a bushing in here that this goes through. And that bushing means that our funky spring stays coiled around the bushing. And so even though it's under some, some tension... Uh, we don't have to worry about the spring flying all over the place uh, as soon as the pin is out. Now, I suspect this bushing is actually replaceable, so if we wanted to replace the spring, we would just uh, push that bushing out to one side or the other. And, yeah, it does come out a little bit. I don't want to have to try and shove that spring back through it, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, it's also a pretty nice fit on mine, so I'm going to leave that nice and centered um, because I don't actually need to replace this spring at the moment. So, yeah, I'm not sure what Walther was thinking when they made these these, these springs. This one and the one in the uh, slide, that's some pretty crazy stuff, and uh, all of them are kind of hard to get your hands on um, until somebody spins up a factory that, that'll make a batch and then they're available for a few years and then they disappear again. So, uh, that's it. There ain't no more parts. Oh, I didn't really talk about what was going on here. When I popped the sear pin out, you noticed that the, uh, the ejector just fell out. And all that's going on here is the ejector, it lays in its little trough and that pin 
um, of the sear just comes right across it. And there's no spring tension uh, when it's neutral. It, it's that's it, I mean you don't have to like push the spring down to get it in place. It just it just literally sits in the correct place in the trough. But that spring leg does sit down in the bottom of the of the frame in the magwell there. So now that that's in there and it has something to rotate against, if you push it down, that little leg of the spring sends it back into the upright position. So I suspect that due to just wear and age, that mine is actually a little out of whack. My guess is that from the factory, the spring is a little more tension to it so that the ejector is held fairly rigidly upright. I'm not going to put too much of a bend back in it. Uh, it's also um, peened in, so I assume that should you need to replace this, hopefully it would come with that little itty bitty spring. Otherwise, that would suck. Um, so here you can see some of the things that are minor, minorly problematic with the design over time. Um, the take the uh, hammer drop mechanism. As we saw, the hammer drop engages right around here, and as the sear comes up, it uh, it's going to cam over, and then it engages right there, where you can see that the the metal of the sear it's been damaged by that. You know it, that that pressure of this piece coming down and lifting it up that's not really the best angle of force and that's why it's got this huge long leg is to allow the the safety to put the force over here and and put a great deal of force at this much closer point so you know the safety is going to move it you know an eighth of an inch just to move it here a few millimeters but that gives it a lot you know of mechanical advantage but that's worn the sear down so again, that's something you've got to be mindful of, that the sear can get worn there. And at some point, that would mean that the uh, hammer drop would no longer drop the sear. It wouldn't be able to push it out. And uh, the way it seems to have peened that metal up probably makes it a little harder each time. The hammer itself, where did the hammer go? Um, the top side looks like it's done pretty good. Uh, we don't see a worn groove where these have interacted, which is nice. And on the bottom, the uh, the other sear, if the light hits it just right, you can you can definitely see the wear pattern. So I'm not sure what's the best visibility on camera for it. Uh, hopefully, doo -doo 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 -doo. hopefully it catches the light for you. But the idea is. Right in here is where that sear and the hammer engages, and I can see a wear mark along there. But uh, as I go across it, it's fairly smooth. It hasn't really worn down. Um, you know, it, it, at least this is easily replaceable. Or if you if you wanted to be really brave, you could try and uh, if you had a really really sharp cut stone, you could try and reface that uh, that surface. But Honestly, uh, these you can still buy, so I would say if there's a problem with it, just replace the whole piece. On the PPK series, this is much harder to remove. It doesn't have a nice friendly pin that comes out. It's got two rivets holding it in, one on each side. And then the other part that could theoretically get worn or, or even break off is where the trigger bar uh, grabs a hold of it here. So uh, again, the trigger bar itself still pretty sharp uh, it's a little worn but not too terribly worn um, basically the only part that that really matters here is just this this at this that comes to a point at the top that should still more or less be a, a fairly sharp angle and it, it engages right in there and so as long as there's good engagement there and there's a ton you know if these parts were barely able to hold on to each other because they were so worn that would be a problem but uh, you know they don't drop off or anything. They're not a, a, a hammer to sear type engagement. It literally just hauls that piece forward and then something big comes down and, and pushes it all the way out of the way. So as long as it's got enough to grab onto the sear firmly, 
that's good to go. Um, I don't think anything else comes apart. Yeah, I think that's all the bits. So let's reassemble. Uh, I'm going to drop the trigger back in from the top and make sure that those front legs rest on the frame. I don't want them to somehow get tucked under the trigger. Um, and I'm going to start the trigger in, or the, excuse me, the, the take down, wow, the slide lock lever. Uh, I'm going to line up the hole. And again, since he's just going through a bushing, there's really nothing holding him back. And uh, we're going to make sure that we have this right side up, which I almost did it upside down. Remember, that little lump is what engages uh, in the side of the sear. So this trough on the side of the sear, that's where this spring applies its pressure and the rounded side of the spring is going to be pushing down on it from the top. I almost put it in like this, which would have been completely bass backwards. And so I'm going to tuck this into the hole and pop him over. And we're going to put our sear back in and he's going to rotate down there and then of course I'll go ahead and start the sear pin oops let's do that where we can actually see it so I'm going to put our sear pin partially in and then I flip it over so I can lay the extra the ejector down in there and just gonna look in through the magazine well to see when it lines up if you can see what I'm looking at down in there I'm just looking to see where he uh, actually lines up with sear pin. all the way through and to hold that whole thing in place we just need to get our spring and bring it over to the top of the sear oops there we go and that puts just a little pressure to hold that in so this has tension this has tension this has tension everybody's happy what did we do next? I think we came in with our trigger bar. So we want to seat that under here first. And then we're going to have to line it up uh, on the front with our trigger. So I'm going to push the trigger a little bit so that it's uh, lining up. And as I start this guy through, remember I'm going to have to pull the spring tension back a little bit to let him get through and make sure that the spring does catch it again. So if I try and put a fingernail under there and pull it out, I can't because the spring is in that little groove in the trigger bar. And we see that the trigger bar does, in fact, activate the sear as it's supposed to. And that if something pushes this down, we have a disconnect. Uh, well, this one, I didn't actually recock this spring. So this spring, um, the short leg is just going to catch on the inside of the magazine well here. And the long one, we will wrap around and tuck into the groove that's cut into the bottom of the trigger bar. So that's our trigger bar spring. So we just set them up like that. And... Drink. Oops. And so now so that, 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 that's got good upward pressure. The disconnect would push that down, but that spring will cause it to pop right back up as soon as it moves back. So disconnect lets the sear pop down. Now as I let go on the trigger, it's going to come back, 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 and it's going to get pushed down. And then this spring causes it to go pop right back up. And now we're engaged again. 
so now as we discussed we've got these guys and they go in like that and our big hammer pin hammer pin hammer pin feels like it's aluminum eh? it's got to be steel it's just weirdly cut kind of crappy machining so uh, not sure what the easiest way to do this is together while I uh, actually line them up. Oops. <laughs> so firing pin safety on the right, hammer in the middle, and then our hammer drop lever on the left. And once they're all in place, I'm just going to use the hammer pin here. to guide everybody back in and there we go did I actually get through all of them yep yep we are engaged everywhere now I'm gonna hold this pin in so until the hammer uh, until the hammer tension is back on here that pin wants to fall out on me so I'm going to guide this back up and into the back of the hammer until we feel it grab, make sure it's in there good. And now I'm just holding that in place. And uh, this is the right orientation. If, you know, if you're confused, if you think about it, if this is like this, this pin is never gonna be able to sit in the frame. So it's gotta be this side down and also, you know, the way the, the grip is, your thumb pushes on this to push it back. So that's the part that's kind of underneath. In other words, it's this little short lip that catches the magazine. And this big body is actually just rotating into the, the back of the grip where you can't see it. But again, if you tried to put it in upside down, you would never be able to, to latch it. It's just way too far away from that pin. So this is correct orientation. And uh, it's actually the spring is what's going to center in that little round cutout. So make sure that your spring actually does get in there. And then you just guide this up along the back of the frame and it snaps right in. And you've got it all. So you've got your tension there and you can test it. So double action. Now, of course, this kind of hurts if your hands are in the wrong place. So said double action but did I lie oh you know what I missed uh oh my hammer strut is not in the right place well, let's try that again before I put this in there what I should have done is cocked it all the way Again, now I failed to hold the pin in. Ugh. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Alright, so let's see what I did wrong. I had this up in there, but I did not actually have it in the right place. So I'm not sure exactly what I had it caught on, but it wasn't right because the hammer couldn't couldn't move. The hammer was bound up. This was caddy corner or something. Something dumb. But now hopefully I've got it right. And again, slide him up into place. And yes, now the hammer can move. So now we should be able to function check. We should have double action. We should be able to disconnect. We should then be able to cock it. We should now hear our reset. That's our reset. And now our single action. Ta-da! Again, reset. Second shot. Reset. Uh, 
I'm going to put it in the cocked position to reassemble it. Um, uh, go ahead and put the grips back on. Oops. Be careful here. Uh, that, that that screw goes through the whole frame as well, but this one you want to make sure that that tucks under and that this comes through cleanly. And if you've got the screw at the, in the frame at the same time, you can monkey that up. And then this side uh, pretty much just sits on it. Yeah. And screw it back together. Mm. forget exactly what the this is if it's for a lariat or what um, there's like some very interesting purpose for this and I embarrassingly don't remember what it is feel free to put that in the comments if somebody knows uh, okay so to reassemble we want to put the lock in the unlocked position so that we can actually put these together and then lock them and I'm holding this in the locked position just so it doesn't fall apart in my hand. Uh, since we were futzing with this, make sure it's all the way in the unlock position here. Remember, back is locked. And this is the position where it's going to let us take it down. And then we slide this bad boy on. And don't forget, don't just slam it on or you'll snap your little poor little ejector off. Let him come down and tuck him under. Again, everything should be right. I'm going to pull this all the way back and slot like lock the slide. And we saw, you know, it unlocked and all that. But now we slide that up, and now the barrel can't come off to the front without that. Um, well, if the slide let go, we would still be able to go forward. But with the back here, that's going to keep it all connected. Um, so again, our function checks. Uh, we've got double action. We've got double action. I'm going to hold it. The disconnect stroke works, so the hammer's caught. I'm going to listen for the reset. Nice short reset. Pull the hammer again. Reset. So while the double action, like all double actions, sucks, I will say that the single action on this, um, it does leave you with... A, a little bit of pre-travel however between shots the reset is really pretty good you know so I mean it's a big trigger so it looks like it's moving around a lot but realistically coming off that reset it's, it's audible and easy to feel you do feel it through the trigger and so as resets go that's pretty short um, now the other thing this has is of course when we put it on safe is the hammer drop now the other thing I was saying uh, earlier is that mechanism in the hammer uh, has intercepted it so the hammer is not got all that spring force leaning on the firing pin therefore leaning on the primer the hammer bottoms itself out so that uh, you know it's inertia that carries it forward into the firing pin and so even, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's on safe or fire, that's the same thing going on there, is uh, that the hammer doesn't rest against the firing pin. That prevents you from getting all that spring tension always pushing on the firing pin, which would make it fairly dangerous. It would also provide immediate transfer. If, if something fell, it would already be pushing on the firing pin, and it would be that much more likely to go off. Um, but it's also important for, you know, the basic hammer drop, it's going to intercept it at that position and, and not actually drop the hammer onto the firing pin. Um, so that is the Walther P38 slash P1. I hope you had fun. Stay safe.